Hello, friends and neighbors. I want to talk to you a moment today about a preacher with a broken heart. Welcome to A Word for Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining us. Each Wednesday, you will find Boggs Family Ministries is here with our host, Davey Boggs. Having you along with us is a wonderful addition. Now, let's enjoy together A Word for Wednesday. Thank you, Brother Devin, for the introduction, and thank you for joining us today on A Word for Wednesday. As I mentioned, I want to talk to you about a preacher with a broken heart. I'm not talking about Jeremiah the prophet, but Jeremiah the prophet is the example of a preacher with a broken heart. He's certainly not the only one. Paul lamented the, the, the condition of the church and believers and where he came from and where he was going. And other preachers have wept over their followers and over the church and over God's children. But Jeremiah set the example. He was the weeping prophet. I noticed this when I was just a teenager reading through the book of Jeremiah and of Lamentations. Jeremiah was called to preach and God gave him a message to preach and told him ahead of time that the people would not listen to him. Wow. How do you do the preaching with the heart that Jeremiah put into it, knowing your message is going to be rejected or just totally ignored? How do you do that? How do you, how do you do, but he did it. He was called, he even tried to refrain. I'm not going to do it anymore, but it was like fire shut up in his bones. He had to preach the message God gave him, and he wept his way through, all the way through his ministry. No, Jeremiah is the example, but he's not the guy I'm talking about. I'm talking about an older preacher that Kelly and I met uh, toward the end of 2022. We were on a trip. I was doing some preaching internationally, uh, kind of unplanned. It was a glorious time that I cherish still to this day. And in that process, we met an older preacher. He attended one of the services. He was a retired preacher sitting right in the front. And at the end of the sermon, he spoke up at the end of the service. He said, I want to tell you, if I was still the senior pastor at my church, I'd get this preacher in his little black book and I'd schedule him for a week of revival and I would preach him about nine times on Sunday because our church needs this message. And he told me privately later, he said, son, now that, that gives you an idea how old he is. I was in my mid fifties that time. And he said, son, your preaching reminds me of the preaching of our older men of God when they were young and our church was on fire and he wept as he said it. He told publicly and he told me privately why he was weeping. He had given his life to a church, to a denomination. He had preached their camp meetings, their conferences, and he had pastored one of their largest, most influential churches in the South for many, many years. He had retired a few years before this. He was older. He was in failing health. He still had some type of uh, more symbolic position with the church, but he, he was out of the senior leadership, just a member there. The denomination that he was a part of was, was facing a division, and the division was over homosexuality, lesbian, gay, transgender, and I don't mean to leave any out, but that's just, that's just the way, best way I know to say it. And the division was over, are they Christians? Are they not Christians? Can they preach? Can they be ordained? Can they be deacons? Can they pastor? Can they be bishops? 
And this controversy had been brewing, really, for many, many years. The denomination he was a part of was a was a was a confluence of several churches through the years. The last major joining was well over 50 years ago. And four years into their existence, the question came up at their at their annual or whatever meeting, or what do we do with homosexuals? And they made a policy at that time. And let me let me go over just a little bit of that. And this is many, many years ago in the early 70s when they came up with this policy. And paraphrasing, they affirm the belief that persons of homosexual nature are, they're sacred and they have sacred worth, it should say. And they need the ministry and the guidance of the church. And, and that's well enough, but here's the statement. The statement added that the church does not condone the practice of homosexuality and considers this practice incompatible with Christian teaching. And since that time, the church had maintained that the practice of homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching. That comes right from their teaching in the early 70s. But they've always had a struggle within their thousands of churches. Eventually, people were, were offering uh, dedication um, services before homosexuality. Homosexual marriage was, was legal. They would join them together as partners, and then they started doing homosexual marriage. And then some bishops were ordaining people into the ministry. And so it was just... It became a, a very, very tense situation because there were thousands of churches and thousands of clergy that wanted to hold to what they said they believed. They were, as far as I know, and I don't know these people, I really wasn't paying attention closely to it until I saw this preacher's heart broken. He wept for the people that he loved so greatly. And he told me of the dissension through the years and how they just kept saying, please, let's just uphold our bylaws. Let's uphold our bylaws. And finally, in the last few years, it came to a point of division and churches begin to leave. And now almost 8,000 churches, one quarter of their churches in America have left. And it's, it's, it remains to be seen what the fallout will be overseas. But in America, one quarter of their churches have left. They've formed other organizations. They've joined other organizations. They've joined independent associations, and some of them are completely independent. But it has been a great, great division. This older preacher, weeping, as he told me, he said, before I came here, I was called in by the the district, I don't know whether the district, the conference, whatever, that local, regional person is it's over several churches he said I was called into his office and he called me by name he said now listen until the vote takes place on what your church that you attend where you pastored until the vote takes place whether they're going to leave or whether they're going to stay I need you to be silent we do not need your voice your voice is old-fashioned your voice clings to outdated methods and modes and interpretation. We, telling this old preacher who gave his life to camp meetings and pastoring and winning people to this church, he said to him, your voice must remain silent until this is over. We do not need your influence on this church. And the old preacher's heart was broken. And I want to tell you, that affected me. My heart has been broken since then. Not only broken for him, but broken for thousands of people that I do not know. You see, our roots as conservative Pentecostal people, our roots run back to the same teachings and doctrines 
and preachers as that church does. I read books. I have hundreds of books in this study that come from men who were the foundations of that same church. My heart is broken too. They have they told this older preacher, look, we're not going to change things. We don't know why you people are wanting to leave anyway. Let's just get along. But as the world has watched the last few weeks, that denomination met for their worldwide conference and they voted in overwhelmingly to remove the language that I read to you that homosexu homosexuality is incompatible with Christianity. They removed that language and they also added language that brought in and welcomed homosexuals into the ministry into the pastor they can be ordained and preachers can do it if they want to they can ordain them if they want to they can marry them if they want to or they can choose not to for now but that is the official policy of this thousands of church denomination in the u.s and around the world and our hearts have been broken. They call us mean-spirited. They call my old friend that I met a bigot. This man that gave his life for the salvation of souls the best he knew how is now labeled as a bigot and old-fashioned and outmoded and clinging to old, outdated ideas and scriptures and Friends, they put me and you in that same class. But I'm not a bigot. I do not hate people who are homosexual. I do not hate people who are in uh, uh, situations where their gender, they feel like it's fluid. Or I, I don't even know the terminology, and I don't mean that in a cross way. I'm just telling you, I love people. I love people. I must preach the word of God in love, but I love the people I'm preaching to. When I am preaching to a person that's bound by alcohol and I'm preaching to a person that's bound by meth or crack or heroin or prescription pills, and I'm talking to them about the shame and the sin and the destruction that's coming in their lives and how that God can redeem them and help them and bring them from that. I'm doing that with love. I'm reaching for them. When I preach about judgment, I'm not preaching about judgment, hoping they go. I'm preaching about judgment, telling them that Christ can deliver them. And the same goes for those who are caught up in sexual sins. I preach the same thing. I love you. And God loves you. He loves you, as I said recently, with an everlasting love. And underneath of you are the everlasting arms. Well, why don't we just all get along? Yes, we want to get along. But as you push biblical teaching away, and make no mistake, that's what this denomination has done. They've left the teaching that they have taught for three and four hundred years and has been affirmed in their teachings for decades. They are pushing that aside. Just because they are pushing that aside, it does not, should not make it a requirement that everybody throw it aside. You want liberty. They want liberty to do what they want to do and we need to be tolerant of that, then I ask for toleration for that older, broken-hearted preacher. And I ask for toleration for this broken-hearted preacher and thousands of other broken-hearted preachers and Christians. We are broken for the sins of our day, and we love the people of our nation and other nations, and we're reaching for them, even though the message may be rejected. God sent Jeremiah to preach it anyway. That broken-hearted preacher 
has been on my mind and my heart strong and heavy. God, give this preacher, give this preacher a spirit of a spirit that weeps for those who need the gospel. God, give me that kind of spirit like my old friend that I met that weeps for those around me and weeps for our nation and our world. In Jesus' name. And that's my word for Wednesday, the very best I can give you my heart today. God bless you. Let's pray for one another. That is our word for Wednesday. We are so glad that you've spent a few minutes with us today. If you've been touched by today's episode, please share it with your friends and family. We welcome your questions or comments below or by email. You can find the email address in the description, along with a link to Mile Markers, the website for Boggs Family Ministries. Also, Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you again, and we hope to see you next Wednesday. Ciao for now.